Well, Kathy Baker, three-time Emmy Award winner, Kathy Baker. We just recently watched you on HBO at Paterno with Al Pacino. What, what did you know about that story before you took on the role? I don't think I knew any more than the average person. I, I'm really interested in sports. I love sports. I mean, I knew obviously about the team and I'd, 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 I'd heard the, the, the terrible story. So, but, but no more than really anyone else who reads the paper. What kind of person did you find out that Sue Paterno was? How would you describe her? I admire her so much. I think she's really an amazing woman. Um, she, I, 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 I wish I'd met her. I did not meet her, but I did a lot of research on her. I read as much as I could. I saw her, uh, you, you know, she's, you, if you go to YouTube, you can see her giving speeches at the college and uh, talking to the students, you know, leading a rally, telling a story about when she was a young coach's wife and, and she, and a, she got other coaches wives to pull a prank uh, during a football game. And she just seems like, um, she, she just seems like a woman that you just want to sit down and, you know, have lunch with. Uh, she has five children. She seemed like she ran the show at home. You know, Joe couldn't have existed without her. Um, she's very involved in, in the school. She went to Penn State. She's very involved in Penn State. She and Joe um, donate a lot of money to Penn State. So she's just a devoted Penn State wife and alumna. And really, I think this really comes across in the movie, so devoted to her husband. Yes, absolutely devoted to her husband. Uh, I mean, her husband is her whole world, her husband and her family. So um, I, I think she was unfortunately just blindsided by this situation. She, she was naive and ignorant of the whole situation and just had no idea. And think how confusing and and how complicated and difficult for her just having no idea about any of this and you see I mean you see it throughout the the, the, the two hours but even to the, there's a very emotional scene toward the end where it's suddenly dawning on her that that this man who's ruined their lives was swimming in the pool with their kids when they were younger and and what you know what was going through his mind at that point that's when you when you get that realization as a as an audience member that she has discovered that that that's that's devastating. It is, isn't it? Isn't that the most beautifully written scene? Um, when I read the script, that scene was the reason I wanted to do the film, other than Barry Levinson and Al Pacino. But that scene, what a what a wonderful scene and complicated minefield to walk through. Um, Barry helped me so much when we shot that scene. I, this seems like a small thing maybe, but I pictured that I would be looking at Al when I, when I asked him all the questions about the pool and about all the different um, bowl games and when was this bowl game and when was this, trying to figure out when, when uh, her husband knew and where everybody, where her family was when we, when we were all spending time with, with, uh, Sandusky and I pictured that she would look at Al and, and Barry said, no, 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 don't look at Al. And he had the set had it set up where we were watching a, a, a football game and it was so much more powerful. Of course, if you don't look at him, don't you think? Sometimes you can't really hardly look at somebody if you have something to say to them. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, Tell me a Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I was just going to say, um, I hope it shows in the in the film. I think I think it does. It you know they've been married for sixty years or something, and and just when you know someone that well and you're you're, you're so in tune to them, sometimes you don't even have to look at them. Sometimes that's almost too much to just face them. So um, anyway, I'm I'm really glad that we played it that way. Tell me about Barry Levinson. He's been one of my favorite directors forever, and this is. This is not this is not an easy story to tell from a from the storyline standpoint, but also it's the way he puts it together is quite complex. Isn't that amazing? That first that first bit with all the football game and with Al being in, with um, you know Al Pacino um, playing Paterno being in the hospital. Isn't that just amazing? The editing of that first section and the 
powerful football images. I, um, well, Barry, I mean, I've always been a huge fan of Barry's, but I never met him. And uh, he, he was just a revelation to me. I, I, I just think he's amazing. I, I loved how he set up the shots. I loved how, how simple, how simply he, he, he goes about his day. By, by that, I mean, there seems to be no muss, no fuss. He just goes about the day, but he knows exactly what he wants. And he can relate that to everyone he's working with in, in this very calm way. And you just get it. And, and, and he appreciates, he appreciates actors so much, appreciates what people do. Um, I, I, I was just, I was just crazy about him. And Al Pacino, one of the greatest actors who's ever lived. What now that you've worked opposite him and you were in so many scenes with him in this movie? What what does he doing that other actors aren't doing? Why are we so compelled to watch him the last forty something years? I know, isn't that something? There's one thing that I noticed that he was doing, which I thought worked so well, and I wondered about it. In the in the script, there are many times when you would think that the actor would speak loudly, shout, uh, you know, exclaim, uh, maybe maybe be, be very dramatically emphatic. And Al approached it extremely quietly, low key, just inward. And that's exactly what you need. And the thing is that he is in just about every frame, right? And you cannot watch someone at a high pitch for a long time without it just not meaning anything to you anymore. And the way he did it, his slow, slow, slow approach, I think it was only one time in the whole film when he raises his voice. And I thought that was so effective. I learned, I really learned from that. Well, for both characters, so much of what we're seeing, while, while the world is unraveling around them, the struggle for them that we see on screen is internal. It's mostly internal and, and them trying to process what's going on. Yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, we are watching, um, is it two weeks in their lives? I thought it was, I thought it was one week, but I noticed in the notes that Barry said it was two weeks. It, it's, it's, um, it's a very small amount of time in their lives in which they realize the repercussions of what has happened. And they have to deal with the fam. The family has to deal with what's happening. And Al's character has to deal with his work and with the university. And so of course it's all internal. And I think another thing that Al Pacino does so beautifully is he's, he's thinking about a million things. His, his character is thinking about a million things at once. And so he's so focused on, on all of his thoughts about his football game, how to, how to coach the Alabama game that's coming up, how to deal with the um, um, indictments, how to deal with the family badgering him about what's gone on, and how he can internalize that, and you can just see on his face what he's thinking about. Well, I sure hope we see you back at the Emmy Awards here in a few months. Your career really took off with the Emmy Awards, and I wanted to ask you about that on Picket Fences. I, I noticed over the years, and, and, and it still happens sometimes, but a show like Picket Fences that's not in the top 10, or Cheers, or Hill Street Blues, or Cagney and Lacey, there's been many, that really relied on those Emmy wins to to stay on the network and be successful. Did you feel like that coming off of all those wins that first year and, and including your own? Oh, oh yes, we, <laughs> uh, I, I remember, um, I remember when Tom and I won at the end, uh, it was, so Tom won Best Actor and I won Best Actress and then, the, and then Pig Fences won Best Show. And I think at the time it was only the second time that all three of those awards had been won by one show and I remember the rest of the cast came backstage and they said, thank you for giving us another season. <laughs> yeah, those, those, uh, especially, I don't, the Emmy Awards, there's so many shows now, you know, 600, 700 oh. shows in a given year, but oh, yeah. uh, with the, you know, basically three networks and some cable back then, I mean, you really relied on, uh, a network relied on those Emmy Awards to be able to, to promote you not only in the United States, but even overseas. 
Exactly. I mean, no one had ever heard of us, I, uh, you know, so we were so shocked. We were completely shocked because we didn't think anyone had been watching. So um, I think when in those days when no one had heard of you and you didn't have all the social media that we have now, I think you did rely on those Emmy Awards. And every year, I believe every year the show won four Emmys, whether it was the show or a guest star or a regular. And I'm, I'm, quite convinced that that kept us going. I don't think I've ever seen, of all the awards that the show won, I don't think I've ever seen anybody happier for another person than when, when I saw your expression when Ray Walston won. Uh, he was one of my favorite uh, actors, uh, not just from Picket Fences, but all those years. What did he mean to you and the show? Oh, we all just loved him so much. We just looked up to him so much. He was just, he was such a character. He and Five Schwinkel, both. Such characters, but but Ray Ray had been around forever. You know, you'd seen him in old films and and obviously the old television shows. And he he was a, he was the kind of guy. He was kind of a stalwart guy. You know, I I I he didn't see well, and I don't think he walked very well. He would ride a little bike all around the lot, and and yet you knew, despite all of his um, physical problems, that he just came in there and just he just laid it down every time you know you'd need one take with him we, we both we, of them seemed like they had such a joy just for the profession of acting regardless of the project of the show yeah and they were so cute they loved each other but they pretended to sort of be rivals and they pretended to you know they insulted each other five was very tall and ray was not so tall um it, it was just so dear to see them together <laughs> you're making me, you're making me misty eyed over those two. <laughs> well, you know, there's so many revivals of shows these days and I would love to see Picket Fences, but on the other hand, those two people brought so much joy to those characters in that little town. I, yeah. I don't know, as a fan, I just don't know if I want to see Picket Fences and, and that and Rome without, without those two. I know, I know, we've all gotten so old. <laughs> No, 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 no. I didn't mean it from that perspective, but they, your storylines and Tom's storylines and, and other family members and certainly the police have more dramatic weight. And I think they brought a little bit of comic relief. And uh, I just, I think I would miss that if the show came back in some form. Absolutely. We, we've lost a number of actors from that show and it would be sad not to, not to have them around if we did a revival. And David E. Kelly, we did a photo gallery on him back in September when Big Little Lies won three acting awards. I don't know if you realize this, and I don't remember the exact number, so people hold me, don't hold me accountable here. It's <laughs> over 30 actors or actresses have won saying his words, whether it be Picket Fences or L.A. Law or Chicago Hope or, or whatever the show is over 30 and, and, and then some of you won multiple times. So I think the numbers up to 38 actors have won, um, uh, you know, saying, saying his screenplays. What, what was it about him and those scripts that, that you love so much? Well, I know, see, I'm not surprised that you, you, you tell me that because- And I think the uh, next closest person, by the way, is somebody like a Steven Bochco and they're like in the teens. I mean, he's like double anybody else in the industry in terms of getting actors Emmy awards. Well, for one thing, he writes such interesting, complicated stuff. Can you hear my doggy barking? Just, I'm sorry. To this. No problem. Lucy. Uh, so we're talking about David Kelly. So he writes such, such complicated characters that actors want to play the part. So I think he got wonderful actors to play his parts, but he can just write such complicated Stuff. It's humor, it's drama, the conflicts that are going on within within you in, in every scene. He, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I can't explain, can't explain it except for the word genius. I, I think he's a genius. And to see him up there when he won, when they won for pretty, uh, sorry. Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies. Oh my gosh. That was just such a thrill because your statistic about 33 or 38 actors winning if you compare that to how many he himself has won for for, for writing, it's 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 a sad. Um, well, I think there's a jealousy. 
there, there are certain writers over the years. Aaron Sorkin had this problem on West Wing. The show would win, actors would win, but it was like the writers would not want to. Oh. They're kind of jealous, I think. Uh, David E. Kelly has quite a few Emmys, but almost all of them are in the program category. Exactly, the program or the actors. Exactly, mm -hmm. you're right. Yeah. So it was great to see him standing up there and giving the speech, the thank you speech. He gives beautiful speeches. So he should be nominated for an Emmy and win just to give one of his beautiful speeches. <laughs> well, another person I wanted to ask you about as we wrap up, um, as I was reading over all of your information about your career, it struck me uh, Sam Shepard passed away in this past year. And I don't, it sounds like you really owe a, a big debt of gratitude to him for even having a career. Exactly. I'm so happy you brought that up because I owe Sam Shepard for my theater career and I owe David Kelly for my television career. Um, so, but Sam really put me on the map. I, I was living in San Francisco doing 99 seat theater, which means theater for no money. And uh, he asked me and Ed to do this new play he'd written called, called uh, Fool for Love. Well, we had, Eddie and I had just done the right stuff and Sam was in the right stuff. And um, we were sitting around at lunch one time and he said, I, I have a play I'd like you to look at. And I had already done two or three of his plays at the Magic Theater, but I'd never done a new one. And when I read this one, I mean, honestly, I, I would have killed to do that part. So just to get it handed to me, I, I just felt like, felt like it was such a great gift. Um, but we took it to New York and I was, quite surprised and shocked that New York wanted us of all people, you know, these unknown, I was from San Francisco. I think at the time Ed Harris lived, I, I guess he, he was from LA, um, but he wasn't known at the time. And that New York wanted us and that they would accept us. I thought they would sort of, I don't know, that they wouldn't be very impressed with us because we were from the West Coast. And it, 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 it just went, psh, it went crazy. People loved it. And so I did it for a year. And every night was like an audition. I, I got jobs out of it. You know, directors would say, I saw you in Full for Love and I wanted you to come in and read for this part. So definitely, definitely Sam put me on the map. And it's a tremendous, tremendous loss. Well, it's a testament to your abilities that the best writers in the world, whether they be playwrights or TV writers or film writers, are all lining up to work with you. And, <laughs> and you. as amazing. I mentioned before we even started, I've been a big fan of yours for years and years. I do hope we see you back at the Emmy Awards. Maybe we'll see you on the red carpet here in a few months. Thank you very much. I look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs>